Okay. Hello everyone. Welcome back to Visual Basic uh, .NET tutorial for databases. Um, first, I'd like to apologize to all of you because I've been too busy. I wasn't able to post anything for very long time. Okay. Um, so anyway, hopefully in the next few weeks I will have more time and I'll be able to post things more frequently. Now. Last time uh, we talked about how we can use query adapters in order to perform operations in the database. Today we are going to see how we can uh, access the values uh, from within our code without using the wizard, okay, almost without using the wizard, and uh, we will be able to do something like this. What you see here is that we have a number of stores, first store, second store, third and fourth, okay? And we have a number of days as you can see. And here we have list of employees. So for each store I want to display the day, <coughs> on each store I want to, uh, uh, and the day intersection, you want to see the employees working on that store. You can as well uh, select a, a time slot here, or a day for a specific store, and uh, drag and drop a person as you can see here I don't know if this could be done with normal methods uh, but I couldn't figure it out uh, so if there is a better way to do it let uh, please let me know so let's get to the code and see how you can do something like this programmatically and also we'll see how to access the tables from within our code okay first thing you need to know uh, is the database structure here and the database structure is quite easy actually uh, we have this EMPs table it contains two columns the first one is employee ID and the second one is the employee name okay so a first employee second and third and we have the Smith Michael and John we can add more of course uh, second one is the stores table and here we have the store ID and the store name as you can see it's, uh, it's as simple as this and the last one is the day ID followed by day name actually you can even use the day directly I don't know why they use day ID this will complicate things a little bit but uh, I guess you can create the day name directly and uh, b because the day name never get repeated okay so you can eliminate this altogether and use just this one okay but anyway I did this way Oh, it's okay. Um, last thing uh, is the work schedule, and here I'm using the primary key from each table. Okay, so this is the employee ID, this is the store ID, this is the uh, day ID. Um, if we wanted to see the relationship, where is that? Uh, it is two relationship. Okay, so this is the relationship actually. You can see the employee ID is taken from the employees table, the store ID is taken from the uh, stores table, and the ID is taken from this one. So this is basically the relationship, um, and this is the database. Now let's start coding here. I'm gonna close this one. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Okay, so let's start with this. Uh, okay, this is our application. Uh, obviously, first thing to do is to add a new data source. Uh, it will be a database. Press next. Select a new connection. Uh, browse for it, and select the test DB. Open. Uh, test your connection. It's okay. Press OK, and press next. Um, probably I'm gonna include this in the project. Yes, and next. Okay, the tables, I want to access all the tables. Okay, press finish. Okay. So now for this particular problem, I will need to uh, to access... Uh, oh, sorry, a mistake. I choose uh, another database. <laughs> okay, come on. New project, Let's start a new project. Sorry, I have two databases. Okay, so this one and uh, the new data source. Gosh, uh, the names are similar. I get confused. Terribly sorry about that. So this is test table. Open and test it. Okay, okay, okay. Let's include that next. 
tables, 1, 2, 3, 4, yeah, the 4 tables. Okay, and press finish. Okay, so we got uh, our tables here. Before I do anything else, let me just change compile options just to avoid any kind of error for 64 bit windows. And this one, okay. Uh, let's go back here. Now, uh, I am gonna need to access the days, EMP, stores, and work schedule tables. And because of that, I need to fold them. I can write the code, but it's easier for me since I'm too lazy to do things. I'm gonna drag and drop uh, each one of these into the form so that uh, the wizard can create things for me. Okay. Uh, did I put the. Yeah. Okay. So. Okay, so let me see the day table adapter, stores table adapter, work schedule to find the source. Yeah. Yeah, I think I have all of these, right? Okay, that's good, that's good. Now, and for this one, I'm gonna remove it. Okay. So now, the wizard created the code for me in order to fold these tables. If I double click this form, okay, come on. Okay. Uh, look at this code, um, the load event, the wizard created this is, uh, these, uh, here it's using the table adapter, uh, okay, you can think about it like data adapter here, in order to fold the data set, now, this is the important part, this is where it folds the work schedule, okay, data set dot work schedule represent the work schedule table, the data set uh, dot stores represent uh, the stores table and the date uh, the uh, test data set dot emp represent the employees table and the uh, test data set dot days represent the days table it is as simple as that okay and we are gonna use these through our program now uh, we are gonna create two things next okay for our interface here the first thing will be a list box where is the list box so this is a list box now and the list box is gonna include all the uh, list of employees so let me use data bound the data source is uh, it's gonna be the employees binding source the member I'm gonna display is the name but I'm gonna keep the ID this is it okay so this one is done. Let me go to the anchor. Okay. Next is the data grid view. Okay. So this is gonna be the data grid view. Okay. Uh, first, I'm gonna change its name to DGV because I want the name to be a little bit shorter, so that it becomes easier to use. Next is the anchor. I'm gonna make it uh, uh, something like this, okay, so that it, it expands with the window. Um, now there are a number of properties that we need to change. We don't want the user to add rows. We don't want the user to delete rows. We don't want to user to resize columns. We don't user want to the user to resize rows. Maybe you want to. But anyway, I'm gonna leave it like this. Uh, okay, uh, what, let me see what also do we want. Uh, you might want to change the background into something like white. Okay, uh, cell border style, column header height, auto size, columns, cursor, yeah. The reason I am taking time to change these uh, parameters, although they don't, uh, these properties, although they don't seem important, is that they are important because they will change the behavior and allow you to sh to see the information correctly in a, and in a professional manner. Okay, and I am gonna revisit these to just tell you why. Okay, so this is the uh, read only. Make sure to make this read only. You don't want the people to change the content of a cell. Okay, you don't. You only want your program to control that. 
okay um, raw head or width make this about 150 or maybe 200 just in case um, raw head or width uh, size no problem uh, okay now this one let me show you this one a little bit um, data grid view cell style and here we have a property called wrap mode and uh, make it true the, we will need this in order to be able to display the line feed in the cell because usually the cells remove the enter and the special keys okay uh, selection mode the selection mode here we're gonna need to select a single cell and uh, let me see what else do we need um, the size tab index tab stop no okay there is multi select property I guess there should be a multi select somewhere oh it, uh, I remember it's called selection mode selection uh, no no sorry sorry what's wrong with me today uh, sorry it's multi select there it is so you make sure uh, okay you do this because you want to select a single cell you don't want to select the whole data grid and move item to it otherwise the program will get confused anyway so this is basically the layout okay if we run this we will not get anything except for the uh, for the list box here and the data grid is still empty and you can do nothing with it now we need in our code uh, some kind of a method to add the days as columns here uh, what are we gonna do is the following I'm gonna create a um, subroutine to add the number of columns so this there there we go public sub f uh, full DGV okay first of all clear all previous items in the DGV okay uh, we do that because we will uh, redisplay the information and the removing all previous info is important okay so the uh, DGV dot rows dot clear we got rid of all the rows DGV dot columns dot clear we get rid of all of the columns now we will add all the columns the column values will come from the days table okay so we'll have to loop on the days table and take each record and put the information so now create all the columns dimension i as integer for i equals zero to okay now this is important part i will access the data set it's called test data set right dot next i will access the table uh, it's called days okay now I am accessing the table now each table contains a number of rows so I can write rows and this will get me the whole set of rows I want to see how many rows are there so I use count minus one okay now I am gonna create a column so it will be uh, be like this dgv dot columns dot add okay first the column name the column name is not visible so I can write whatever here so I'm gonna use test data set dot days dot rows of i so we'll, this would give me the i throw dot to access the, the column uh, 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 the, the value of the row I'm gonna access the first value and it's always value zero remember to use the item property don't use field or anything else okay so this one is not visible the one that is visible is the day name which is the second column okay um, so this one it will be test data set dot days dot rows of i dot item of one okay so you might be wondering why did I put zero here why did I put one here okay uh, actually if you want you can put the column name if you would like to there is no problem okay but uh, you must uh, be careful and write the correct column name 
okay so if we go to the data set let me just show this to you and where is the days so this is the first column and it is column zero obviously this is the second column